то мгновение, когда эти мысли проносились у меня в голове, In the instant that these thoughts passed through my mind. Я повернулся, чтобы броситься к окну. I had turned to make for the window. Но мой взгляд, случайно обратившийся на тело моего прежнего стража, But my eyes alighting on the form of my erstwhile guardian. Напрочь выбросил из моей головы все мысли о побеге. Through all thoughts of flight to the four winds. Он лежал, задыхаясь на полу зала. He lay gasping upon the floor of the chamber. Его огромные глаза были устремлены на меня, казалось, жалобной мольбой о защите. His great eyes fastened upon me in what seemed a pitiful appeal for protection. Я не мог выдержать этот взгляд. I could not withstand that look. Также я не мог взвесив все еще раз. Nor could I, on second thought, покинуть моего спасителя, не постаравшись ради него так же, как он постарался ради меня. have deserted my rescuer without giving as good an account of myself in his behalf as he had in mine. Поэтому без дальнейших колебаний without more ado, therefore Я развернулся, чтобы встретить нападение разъяренного самца обезьяны. I turned to meet the charge of the infuriated bull ape. Он был теперь слишком близко ко мне, чтобы дубинка могла оказать мне сколько-нибудь существенную помощь. He was now too close upon me for the cudgel to prove of any effective assistance. Поэтому я просто бросил ее со всей силы, с какой мог, в его приближающуюся тушу. So I merely threw it as heavily as I could at his advancing bulk. Она ударила его как раз ниже колен. It struck him just below the knees. Вызвав вой боли и ярости. Eliciting a howl of pain and rage. Избила его с ног так, And so throwing him off his balance that что он рухнул прямо на меня с широко раскинутыми руками, чтобы смягчить падение. He lunged full upon me with arms wide stretched to ease his fall. С 
Снова, как и предыдущим днем. Again, as on the preceding day. Я прибег к земной тактике. I had recourse to earthly tactics. И нанес ему удар правым кулаком прямо в край подбородка. And swinging my right fist full upon the point of his chin. И следом за этим я нанес ему сокрушительный удар левым кулаком под ложечку. I followed it with a smashing left to the pit of his stomach. Эффект был чудесный. The effect was marvelous. Так как, когда я слегка отступил в сторону после нанесения второго удара, Fur, as I lightly sidestepped, after delivering the second blow, Он покачнулся и упал на пол, скорчившись от боли и хватая ртом воздух. He reeled and fell upon the floor doubled up with pain and gasping for wind. Перепрыгнув через его распростертое тело, Leaping over his prostrate body. Я схватил дубинку и прикончил чудовище, прежде чем оно могло встать на ноги. I seized the cudgel and finished the monster before he could regain his feet. Когда я нанес удар, тихий смех прозвучал позади меня. As I delivered the blow, a low laugh rang out behind me. И обернувшись, я увидел Тарса Таркаса, Солу. And turning. I beheld Tars Tarkas, Sola. И трех или четырех воинов, которые стояли в дверях комнаты. And three or four warriors standing in the doorway of the chamber. Когда мои глаза встретились с их, я во второй раз получил их тщательно сдерживаемые аплодисменты. As my eyes met theirs I was, for the second time, the recipient of their zealously guarded applause. Мое отсутствие было замечено Солой при ее пробуждении. My absence had been noted by Sola on her awakening. И она быстро сообщила об этом Тарсу Таркасу. And she had quickly informed Tars Tarkas. который немедленно отправился с горсткой воинов искать меня.
who had set out immediately with a handful of warriors to search for me. Когда они добрались до границ города, As they had approached the limits of the city, они стали свидетелями действий обезьяны самца. They had witnessed the actions of the bull ape. Когда она ринулась внутрь здания кипят ярости. As he bolted into the building, frothing with rage. Они немедленно последовали за ней. They had followed immediately behind him. Полагая лишь возможным. Thinking it barely possible. что ее действия могут стать ключом к разгадке моего места пребывания. That his actions might prove a clue to my whereabouts. И стали свидетелями моей короткой, но решительной схватки с ней. and had witnessed my short but decisive battle with him. Эта схватка, так же как и стычка с марсианским воином предыдущим днем, this encounter, together with my set to with the Martian warrior on the previous day, И мои достижения по части прыжков. And my feats of jumping. Заслужили мне высшую степень их уважения. Placed me upon a high pinnacle in their regard. Очевидно, лишенные всех утонченных эмоций, таких как дружба, любовь и привязанность. Эти люди просто преклоняются перед физическим совершенством и мужеством. These people fairly worship physical prowess and bravery. И нет ничего, что было бы достойно для объекта их обожания. And nothing is too good for the object of their adoration. До тех пор, пока он сохраняет свое положение повторением примеров ловкости, силы и храбрости. As long as he maintains his position by repeated examples of his skill, strength, and courage. Соло, которое сопровождало поисковую группу по своему собственному желанию, Сола, who had accompanied the searching party of her own volition, была единственной из марсиан, 
was the only one of the Martians. Чье лицо не было искажено смехом, когда я сражался за свою жизнь. Whose face had not been twisted in laughter as I battled for my life. Она напротив была сдержанной, проявляя очевидную тревогу. She, on the contrary, was sober with apparent solicitude. И как только я прикончил чудовище, and as soon as I had finished the monster, бросилась ко мне и внимательно осмотрела мое тело в поисках возможных ран или повреждений. Rushed to me and carefully examined my body for possible wounds or injuries. Убедившись, что я вышел из битвы без единой царапины, satisfying herself that I had come off unscathed. Она тихо улыбнулась и, взяв меня за руку, направилась к двери комнаты. She smiled quietly and, taking my hand, started toward the door of the chamber. Тар Старкас и другие воины вошли. Tars Tarkas and the other warriors had entered. И стояли над теперь быстро приходившим в себя животным, которое спасло мою жизнь. And were standing over the now rapidly reviving brute which had saved my life. и чью жизнь, в свою очередь, спас я. And whose life I, in turn, had rescued. Казалось, они были поглощены спором. They seemed to be deep in argument. И, наконец, один из них обратился ко мне. And finally one of them addressed me. Но, вспомнив о моем незнании их языка, снова повернулся к Тарсу Таркасу. But remembering my ignorance of his language turned back to Tars Tarkas. Который одним словом и жестом. Who, with a word and gesture. Отдал какой-то приказ воину и повернулся, чтобы следом за нами выйти из комнаты. Gave some command to the fellow and turned to follow us from the room. Казалось, что в их отношении к моему животному было что-то угрожающее. There seemed something menacing in their attitude toward my beast.
и я не решался уйти, пока не выясню исход дела. And I hesitated to leave until I had learned the outcome. И хорошо, что я поступил так. It was well I did so. Так как воин вытащил зловещего вида пистолет из кобуры. For the warrior drew an evil looking pistol from its holster. И уже хотел прикончить животное. And was on the point of putting an end to the creature. Когда я прыгнул вперед и ударил его по руке. When I sprang forward and struck up his arm. Пуля, ударившая о деревянную раму окна, взорвалась. The bullet striking the wooden casing of the window exploded. Полностью пробив дыру через дерево и каменную кладку. Blowing a hole completely through the wood and masonry. Затем я опустился на колени рядом с устрашающего вида существом. I then knelt down beside the fearsome looking thing. И подняв его на ноги, сделал ему знак следовать за мной. And raising it to its feet motioned for it to follow me. Удивленные взгляды, которые мои действия вызвали у марсиан, были нелепы. The looks of surprise which my actions elicited from the Martians were ludicrous. Они не могли понять, разве что очень смутно, и как понимал бы ребенок. They could not understand, except in a feeble and childish way. Такие свойства души, как благодарность и сочувствие. Such attributes as gratitude and compassion. Воин, чей пистолет я выбил. The warrior whose gun I had struck up. Посмотрел вопросительно на Тарса Таркаса. Looked inquiringly at Tars Tarkas. Но последний сделал знак, чтобы меня предоставили самому себе. But the latter signed that I be left to my own devices. Итак, мы вернулись на площадь. При этом мое огромное животное следовало за мной по пятам. And so we returned to the plaza with my great beast following close at heel. А соло крепко держала меня за руку.
and Sola grasping me tightly by the arm. У меня было по меньшей мере два друга на Марсе. I had at least two friends on Mars. Молодая женщина, которая охраняла меня с материнской заботливостью. A young woman who watched over me with motherly solicitude. И бестолковое животное, которое, как я позже узнал, and a dumb brute which, as I later came to know, вмещала в своей бедной уродливой туши больше любви, больше верности, больше благодарности, held in its poor ugly carcass more love, more loyalty, more gratitude. чем можно было найти у всех пяти миллионов зеленых марсиан. Then could have been found in the entire five million green Martians. Которые скитаются по заброшенным городам и мертвым морям Марса. Who rove the deserted cities and dead sea bottoms of Mars? In the instant that these thoughts passed through my mind, I had turned to make for the window, but my eyes alighting on the form of my erstwhile guardian threw all thoughts of flight to the four winds. He lay gasping upon the floor of the chamber, his great eyes fastened upon me, in what seemed a pitiful appeal for protection. I could not withstand that look, nor could I, on second thought, have deserted my rescuer, without giving as good an account of myself in his behalf as he had in mine. Without more ado, therefore, I turned to meet the charge of the infuriated bull-ape. He was now too close upon me for the cudgel to prove of any effective assistance so I merely threw it, as heavily as I could, at his advancing bulk. It struck him just below the knees, eliciting a howl of pain and rage, and so throwing him off his balance, that he lunged full upon me, with arms wide stretched, to ease his fall. Again, as on the preceding day, I had recourse to earthly tactics, and swinging my right fist full upon the point of his chin, I followed it with a smashing left to the pit of his stomach. The effect was marvelous, for as I lightly sidestepped, after delivering the second blow, he reeled and fell upon the floor, doubled up with pain and gasping for wind. Leaping over his prostrate body, I seized the cudgel and finished the monster before he could regain his feet. As I delivered the blow, a low laugh rang out behind me, and turning I beheld Tars Tarkas, Sola, and three or four warriors standing in the doorway of the chamber. As my eyes met theirs, I was, for the second time, the recipient of their zealously guarded applause. My absence had been noted by Sola on her awakening, and she had quickly informed Tars Tarkas, who had set out immediately with a handful of warriors to search for me. As they had approached the limits of the city, they had witnessed the actions of the bull-ape as he bolted into the building frothing with rage. They had followed immediately behind him, thinking it barely possible that his actions might prove a clue to my whereabouts, and had witnessed my short but decisive battle with him. This encounter, together with my set-to with the Martian warrior on the previous day, and my feats of jumping, placed me upon a high pinnacle in their regard. Evidently, devoid of all the finer sentiments of friendship, love, or affection, these people fairly worship physical prowess and bravery, 
and nothing is too good for the object of their adoration as long as he maintains his position by repeated examples of his skill, strength, and courage. Sola, who had accompanied the searching party of her own volition, was the only one of the Martians whose face had not been twisted in laughter as I battled for my life. She, on the contrary, was sober with apparent solicitude, and as soon as I had finished the monster, rushed to me and carefully examined my body for possible wounds or injuries. Satisfying herself that I had come off unscathed, she smiled quietly and, taking my hand, started toward the door of the chamber. Tars Tarkas and the other warriors had entered and were standing over the now rapidly reviving brute which had saved my life, and whose life I in turn had rescued. They seemed to be deep in argument, and finally one of them addressed me, but remembering my ignorance of his language, turned back to Tars Tarkas who, with a word and gesture, gave some command to the fellow, and turned to follow us from the room. There seemed something menacing in their attitude toward my beast, and I hesitated to leave until I had learned the outcome. It was well I did so, for the warrior drew an evil-looking pistol from its holster, and was on the point of putting an end to the creature, when I sprang forward and struck up his arm. The bullet striking the wooden casing of the window exploded blowing a hole completely through the wood and masonry. I then knelt down beside the fearsome-looking thing, and raising it to its feet, motioned for it to follow me. The looks of surprise which my actions elicited from the Martians were ludicrous. They could not understand, except in a feeble and childish way, such attributes as gratitude and compassion. The warrior, whose gun I had struck up, looked inquiringly at Tars Tarkas, but the latter signed that I be left to my own devices, and so we returned to the plaza with my great beast following close at heel, and Sola grasping me tightly by the arm. I had at least two friends on Mars, a young woman who watched over me with motherly solicitude, and a dumb brute which, as I later came to know, held in its poor ugly carcass more love, more loyalty, more gratitude, than could have been found in the entire five million green Martians, who roved the deserted cities and dead sea-bottoms of Mars. A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs Read by Mark Nelson This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org.